a few points to make about um, the martyrdom of St. Stephen. As we've seen in other Sundays for Easter, the reason the church gives us readings from the book of Acts is to show us, especially as we're preparing to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost, to show us the activity of the Holy Spirit in the early days of the Christian church. And one of the main things that the Holy Spirit does in the church in those first decades after Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection is send out evangelists, not just to proclaim the good news, but also to be witnesses to Christ. And the Greek word for witness is martus, where we get the word martyr from. So the book of Acts actually begins in Acts chapter 1 with Jesus saying to the disciples, you will be my martures, my witnesses, my martyrs to the end of the earth. So in Acts chapter 7, the account of Stephen's martyrdom, of his bearing witness to Christ even unto death, is a truly momentous event in the life of the early church. And it's fitting that as we prepare for the Feast of Pentecost, which is going to be the coming of the Holy Spirit, that we would get this account of Stephen, who was able to bear witness to Christ even unto death. Why? Because he was, quote, full of the Holy Spirit. So that's the first point I want to make. The second point I want to make here is that the reason for Stephen's execution is the same reason Christ is executed. It's the charge of blasphemy. Now, in this case, we don't actually hear them explicitly accuse Stephen of blasphemy. But nevertheless, that is the reason that they put him to death. And you can infer it from the Jewish context, because for two reasons. First, when Stephen says he sees Jesus standing at the right hand of God, to be at the right hand of a king implies equality and equal authority with that king. So to place Jesus at the right hand of God is a confession of his equality with God, which if he were viewed as merely human, that would be a blasphemous statement. And that's why um, those who are standing around Stephen, when they hear him, it says they stop their ears, right? So they're trying to block out the blasphemous statement that he's making about Jesus by saying he's in heaven and at the right hand of God. And the second clue to the, the fact that the reason they execute him is blasphemy is because of the manner of execution, which is that they stone him to death. So if you go back to Leviticus chapter 24, the, uh, it says that anyone who blasphemes the Lord will be stoned to death. Right? So stoning is the particular method of execution that the scripture proclaims, or not proclaims, but uh, prescribes for the execution of a blasphemer. Now, um, you might think, well, wait, why wasn't Jesus stoned if that's the case? Well, uh, in Jesus' day, what happened was he was a visible enough figure where the Sanhedrin had to figure out how to have him executed in keeping with Roman law. Because according to Roman law, the Jewish leaders did not actually have the official capacity to pronounce capital punishment on anybody. But in this case, the execution of Stephen is not an official act of the Sanhedrin. It's more of what we would call mob violence, right? So in the heat of the moment, in the moment of his blasphemy, the mob gathers, they're going to stone him to death, and then they're going to disperse. And as anyone who's familiar with occupational authority of figures like the Romans, sometimes the government looks the other way when mob violence takes place or breaks out, and especially in a spontaneous situation. So that appears to be what's happened here with Stephen, right? So like Christ, he is uh, put to death as a blasphemer. And the other final thing about Stephen's martyrdom that's fascinating is that his martyrdom itself is actually configured to Christ in two ways. Um, first, by the fact that he says of his um, executioners, um, Lord, do not hold this sin against them right? So this is an echo. Echo. Anyone reading Acts would re recall that in the Gospel of Luke, which remember is written by the same author as the evangelist, uh, the same author as Acts, Jesus says, Lord, forgive them, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So just as Jesus prayed for the forgiveness of his executioners, so Stephen prays for the forgiveness of his executioners. Se secondly, in the Gospel of Luke, when Jesus dies, he says, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. He quotes Psalm 31. And then Stephen says something very similar. But he says, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Okay. So there's a Christomorphic character to Stephen's martyrdom. Stephen is, in a sense, a new Christ. He's being conformed to Christ. 
as a Christianos, right, as a little Christ, that's the Acts is the first book where they're called Christians, he's being configured to Christ, not just in his life of proclaiming the good news and confessing the divinity of Jesus, but also in his death, in the very manner of his death, in the very words of his death. So it's very fitting that in the season of Easter, as we're, the church is taking us on this journey through the Acts of the Apostles, that we would not just look at the evangelism of St. Peter or St. Paul. Well, Paul, it's going to take him a minute. He's got to get converted first. But in the first seven chapters, you have Peter and the early Jerusalem church. That climax is really with the, with the martyrdom of Stephen, right? Um, this is, in a sense, a centerpiece in the book of Acts, where Stephen is full of the Holy Spirit, that's given at Pentecost, and configured to Christ in his death.